Okay, hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 138 of the Spears Sunnies podcast. My name is Lewis Spears. I'm your host for this evening, morning, whenever the fuck you're listening to it. This is a Thursday for me. It's going up early for you Patreon cunts. Everybody else, oh, I have to listen to it on a Sunday. Right, now... Before we get into this episode, I've got a couple of fucking dates for you. Where are they? I am going to be in Hobart on the uh, on the 9th of November. Oh, hang on. The 9th. Oh, what is that? Is that 9-11? Why does it say 9-11 if it's fucking... Is that date wrong? 8, 9, the 10th. Bro. I might be stupid. 9-11. When is that? Or the 9th of the 11th. That's a Saturday. Okay, it's a Saturday. Oh, sorry. I'm stupid. I'm like, oh, but 9-11 is uh, 9-11. But Americans do their dates the other way. On uh, Saturday, the 11th. Oh, no, wait. Saturday, the 9th of the 11th, November, I'm going to be in Hobart. Now, if you would like to see me, I will be visiting Greeley at Risden Maximum Security Prison. So you must murder someone if you want to meet me. Um, Otherwise, you can just buy a ticket to the show, which will be happening the day after that on the 9th of the 11th. Australian dates uh, in Hobart at lewispears.com slash gigs. And then uh, the weekend after that, I'm going to be in Bunbury, Perth and Adelaide on the 15th. 16th and 17th of November and that's going to wrap up the No Slide Season Tour and that's how it's going to end. Guys, uh, this tour has been going crazy, obviously, because I keep fucking missing episodes, but dude, I got so much shit planned for Speared Sundays, man. I actually have... uh I've, I'm going to revamp the entire podcast, the entire set. I'm going to upgrade the camera. Uh, I'm going to do all of that kind of shit uh, and make it look nice and pretty, do clips properly, and we're going to be funding that with Patreon. So if you want to help out and get early access to everything that I do, jump on patreon.com slash Spears and support the boy. You get access to the Discord group, which is uh, basically just turning into an opportunity to exclusively roast me with a tight-knit community of cunts who love to uh, put it on me when I miss an episode, but also whenever I wear any item of clothing that I like. So join the exclusive Roast Lewis Spears community at Patreon, all right? So, guys, uh, I am in uh, a lot of pain. Uh, I'm in heaps of pain, a lot, uh, all day since yesterday because uh, I thought that I was a 25-year-old, young, healthy adult male. Uh, who was nice and fit, had a good rig, uh, lived a healthy lifestyle, didn't do drugs, doesn't drink, eats properly, right? I thought that was the kind of body that I have, but uh, evidently, I actually have the body of a 90-year-old senior who's been doing heroin since he was nine, because I've done my neck again, guys, again, right? First time I did it, I did it uh, at the gym, right? Totally acceptable place to do an injury, right? Except for the way that I did it, right? I'm doing bench press, yeah? And uh, you think, oh, uh, how did you hurt your neck doing bench press, Lewis? Did you drop weights on your neck? No, but good guess, right? Here's how I did it. Oh, is my fucking address on that? I'm going to have to blur that, for fuck's sake. That's annoying. Right. I'm going to have to blur that, and I won't forget. People will be like, oh, I know where he lives. Um, So... What I'm saying, right? So I'm doing bench press. Sorry, I'm in a lot of pain. Right, this is going to be a very relaxed episode because I'm I can't yell because uh, when I yell, uh, I I start seeing spots. <laughs> oh, that hurt. Um, so I'm at the gym. I'm doing bench press. I've told the story before, right? I put the weights down, right on the ground. I sit up. I stopped exercising, and then I just did a little stretch. I looked up, and then I heard a crunch, like when you step on Legos, but in my neck. Um, and then I just couldn't look left or right, which was fucked, uh, but also understandable because, hey, I hurt myself at the gym, you know, that's totally normal, hurting yourself at, in a gym environment, no worries, that's acceptable, right? Then, uh, it took me a few days to get over that, I did some stretches, whatever, took some painkillers, moved on with my life, got all better, 100% better, or so I thought. Then, uh, you know, no slide season tour, I've been in cars, I've been in planes, it's not good for my long body because I don't fit in either of those two things, I don't fit in planet Earth, man. It's not good for me. Existing is bad for my spine. I feel like we need to... Um, I feel, <laughs> I'm going to be like one of those cunts on Twitter where they're like, 
I get offended, so you have to alter how you speak. So, but it's like I don't fit in anything, so we need to make every door frame in the world bigger, right? I'm going to inconvenience the rest of the planet just because I'm uncomfortable. Yesterday, right? I wake up, had a lovely sleep, first sleep home, right? My first sleep, proper sleep home in my own bed. I wake up and I do the whole. I did a big stretch. I looked up and then I just heard this massive crunch in the back of my neck. And then I was just in heaps of pain immediately, straight away, just heaps of pain. I was like, holy fuck, this hurts a lot, right? So then I, I got up and I did some neck stretches. Uh, I was like, fuck, I've done it again. I've got to do my stretches now. Otherwise, it'll be horrible and even worse throughout the day, right? So I do that and then I go back to sleep. I wake up and it's three times worse. Fucking awful. I can't move. I started laying on the ground, looking up, directly up at this. Oh, sorry. Okay. So the camera died because of course it did. Why wouldn't that happen? Um, dude, so I was in so much fucking pain. And then uh, I end up going to, it was so bad that I was like, you know what, right? I did the most anti-male thing ever. Like no man should ever do this. I don't recommend any man do this, but I did do this, right? And I feel like less of a man for it. I was in pain. I was experiencing uh, a lot of negative symptoms of an injury slash illness that I've given to myself. And I decided uh, against my manhood, the most unmanly thing I've ever done, I decided to see a medical professional. And I got to say, I'm so disappointed in myself. I really thought I could man my way through that, you know? Like, I don't know, I don't know why every man has that thing in them of like, oh, I don't need a fucking doctor. There's just some guy with like one arm. I don't need the hospital. I just need to toughen up. And he's like bleeding out. He's turned blue. There's no blood in him. He's like, don't call the ambulance. I'm fine. I'm fine. I didn't, I'm a man. I don't need to go to the hospital. And he starts to die. Going into a seizure. I don't fuck. Ow. My neck hurts so much. I can't even do the seizure thing. Fuck. But that was a good run while we were going with it, huh? We all enjoyed that bit. Start, middle, and didn't really have an end, but it was finished. Um, I did that, right? It was so bad. I was like, fuck. So I go to the, I go to the physio. Um and uh, book an appointment and I go there and he, he looks at me and he goes, um, and like I just see in his face, he goes, ah, I'm going to get a lot of return business out of this long cunt. He doesn't fit in the world and that pays my rent. You know, it's really in, it's really in the physiotherapist's best interest to lower the size of every door frame make chairs for normal sized people because it really just fucks with me and make sure that I'll end up on his table going, my neck hurts, right? So that's what happened. I go there, I tell him about it and he go, he reckons it's a really, ow, really, oh, sorry, this is going to be such a painful podcast for me. Um, he reckons it's a really common thing, especially because I've been sitting in chairs and traveling, right? And um, apparently what I've done is I've sprained my neck, like where my muscle of my of my head, my skull connects to my spine, I've sprained that by looking up. So he gave me all these exercises, and I was in so much pain. I lay down on his table, take my shirt off, right, um, and then I just hear doom, doom, ba do, ba do, do, like the Pornhub intro. <laughs> uh, and then I feel so much better. I mean, my neck hurts, but I am covered in cum, so that that was worth the entry fee. Um, No, he gives me a massage for like 25 minutes. He just figures out what's wrong. He goes, ah, there it is. And he just starts doing this shit. And I got up and I was fine. Like I'm still obviously fucked now, but like immediately after the massage, it was such a huge difference. It was it like shocked me how, uh, I don't know why I'm shocked. Like I can't believe a guy who's studied his whole life to become a physiotherapist knows how to make my body feel better when I have an injury. That's crazy. Um, but I'm going back on Friday. That's another thing, right? I didn't like that. But also, it's probably good. It's good for him and good for me, right? I go there and uh, he does the thing. He gives me a massage. He gives me exercises, tells me what to do. And then he's like, and I'll see you in on Friday again. And I was like, oh, yeah, uh, fuck. Uh, and then he just takes me out to the reception. She goes, all right, so just talk to Kelly and she'll uh, she'll put you in for, for a Friday morning, right? And I'll be like, yeah, okay. And then she just booked me in an appointment for Friday. And now I just have to go and pay for it again. It's going to cost me like another $100. 
It's expensive, but I also uh, would rather be a hundred dollars poorer than be in a fucking wheelchair, dude. It was funny. I was like, do I need to avoid anything? He goes, look, just don't go to the gym. And I was like, oh, fuck. Uh, don't go to the gym for at least a week or at least until I see you on Friday. I'm like, okay, I can do that. That's annoying, but I can do that. And he goes, and also um, try not to look down. And I was like, what? <laughs> That's impossible, right? My whole life is looking down. I'm just that tall. If I need to have a conversation with anyone, I'm looking down. If I need to read anything, I'm looking down. If I need to make sure that I don't bump into people, I'm looking down. My whole life is looking down. If I looked forwards, I wouldn't see anything. I would just see the horizon, bro. I'm like, all right, I'll try my best. And I've started trying to look up and it's not good. And then he goes, and also the most important thing, this is very important, especially because of the type of injury you have. I was like, yep. He goes, you must make sure that you do not drive. <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck, that's going to be a hard one, man. That's going to be difficult, but I reckon I'm going to manage it. Thank fuck the one time uh, me having no license comes in handy. At 25 years old, I finally found a single benefit, and that is I will not be driving because if I do, I'll hurt my neck. Um, tour has been fun, man. Been uh, I got to go to a bunch of cool places. I did Albury for the first time. Oh, no, wait, not Albury. Yes. I don't know where I did. Did a small town for the first time. Was it Albury? wasn't Albury. Where the fuck did I go? Bendigo? Nah, before that. Canberra? After that, Aubrey. I did do Aubrey. Yeah, the, the little one. Yeah, there we go. Keelan's my extra memory. Aubrey was fun, man. Um, that was cool. It was like 40 people. There were people in the back row literally uh, passing each other pills and eating them in the back row. Almost kicked them out. Uh, not sure if they remembered the show. Don't think they laughed very much, but they were definitely there uh, or in an alternate universe. I don't know. Their pupils looked bigger than their eyes. You know that? When, they're, when, they're, when their pupils are so, so big, they seem to be spilling outside of their eyeballs. It was, it was that situation. Everybody else at the show was lovely. Um, and it, it always reminds me why those regional towns are fun to do because you get a very appreciative audience. They're nice and intimate. You can see everybody there. And sometimes people in the back row start munching pills. And that's a story to tell all your friends. So that was good. I'm uh, going to be bummed when this tour is over, man. It's probably been the most fun I've had on tour because I've been doing nothing. Like, it's the first time I haven't booked a tour myself. It's the first time I've had, like, a tour manager consistently. Uh, everything's just been sorted. The videos have been coming out while I'm on tour, so my channel hasn't just fucking stagnated and died. And we're getting, like, heaps of stand-up clips filmed and ready. Hope you guys enjoyed that Weinstein bit. That, was a, that one was a bit of a coin toss on whether or not I would do it, upload it. I did it for the first time in Albury, like the day after it all happened in the news. It fucking tanked in Albury. Um, it was a combination of people in the back row being off their face and the bit just being way too offensive. So I had to like rewrite it and rework it, change the delivery. Uh, and then I did it in Bendigo and it did really well. And that's what you guys saw. I just really would have loved to... It was kind of a bummer that I only had tiny shows when I had that bit. Um, it would have been great to record that in front of like a huge crowd. I feel like it would have gone even better because Bendigo was only about 70 people, I think. The regional ones are pretty small. I feel like if we did it in like a theater like the major cities, it would have fucking gone off. But I also wanted to put it out when it was, when it was current news and everything, so... What I'm saying is, if Harvey Weinstein raped all those hundred women about two weeks later, that would have been way better for my bit. So I think that's a little bit selfish on him to uh, to sexually assault women without uh, considering me and my comedy career. So Weinstein, step your game up, bro. Not good enough. Um, had an interesting morning today, right? Got into the warehouse. Uh, I've got a coffee. I've got my computer. I'm trying to stand up straight. I'm walking like I've got a rod in my spine, right? I'm in pain. I uh, get out my keys, unlock the gate, go in the warehouse, unlock the door. Uh, and then uh, I uh, sit there, work for a little bit. Keelan comes in and goes, hey, man, how you going? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. He goes, did you what? Did you see what's happening outside? I'm like, hmm, no, I didn't, I didn't see what's happening outside. He goes, oh, uh, I think the... <laughs> I think the police are raiding the warehouse. And I was like, oh, here we go. 
right? So, of course, I stand up and I go out. And sure enough, bro, and I, the only thing he got wrong, it wasn't the police. That was the fucking AFP, right? It wasn't like regular cops. It was like everyone in planes clothes, wearing body armor. Um, there was like people that had been arrested sitting on the street. Everyone's getting yelled at. There was a battering ram, guns, cop cars everywhere. Uh, and I get talking to the guy. Apparently, they... Uh, they uh, had a warrant and everything. They smashed down someone's door. I don't know who it was. Um, but I just think that that's really fucking great. I just think that's the perfect working environment for a comedian trying to make videos and podcasts is a place where the cops might come in, guns drawn, put me on the floor and a couple of caps in my spine. It's a really safe working environment for me and my, uh, my camera guy, isn't it? Huh? Isn't that great? I love that. Love that energy being surrounded by brothels they found a dead body around the corner last year this year you know getting fucking raided please help me please support me on patreon i need to get out of here i'm i'm actually gonna die i'm please help <laughs> please help all i need is a hundred more patrons and we can get the fuck out of here i think my life is at risk holy shit this is so fucked this whole place is a hole bro every time i'm here something more fucked happens um, man, that's so funny. I knew that was going to happen. Also, someone else is dealing nangs here. They're just selling nangs. The whole street is littered with nangs. Some teenagers showed up a couple weeks ago. I came out of the warehouse and they're like, bro, Lewis Spears? And I was like, oh, fuck, my address is out. Oh, no. And then they're like, oh, what are you doing here? And I was like, fuck, what are you guys doing here? And they go, oh, we're here to buy nangs. I was like, oh, fuck. Well, that's not me. And then they were really suspicious. So now I know that the story is, oh, do you know Lewis Spears sells nangs outside of a warehouse? For fuck's sake. That's what everyone's going to be talking about. That whole friendship group definitely thinks that I, I'm a nang dealer and I was pretending that I wasn't selling nangs. Also, that was the second time fans were trying to buy nangs outside my warehouse. That was not the first time. So it's really good to see the type of demographic I, I attract, guys, is like autistic people and cunts who love nangs. That's great. That's my audience. <laughs> and lesbians. Awesome. It's really good. Um, this is this is going to be a very negative episode of the Speared Sunnies podcast because I'm in pain. Oh, fuck. Um, what else has been happening here? That Mr. Beast cunts planting a bunch of trees. Everyone's going, oh, do a video about the tree. No, I'm not doing a video about the trees. You know why? Because uh, boring. And also, what am I going to do? I oh, also, everybody knows. I'm not doing a video about the fucking trees thing, bro. Because I can't, th I'm, trying to, I'm trying to sell tickets, not save the environment here. I bought re reusable spoons, yeah? That was my bit. I'm not telling you cunts to go plant trees. I mean, if you want to, go and do it. It's a great cause, but I'm not making a fucking video about it, right? Mr. Beast doesn't need any of my help. Elon Musk gave him a million dollars, all right? That's it. What am I going to do? You guys have a, do you guys have $2 million? No, you don't. So stop asking me to make a fucking trees video, okay? I did my bit, yeah? I stopped using plastic uh, spoons at the warehouse. I spent three times the amount to get biodegradable wooden spoons. And now, every time I try and eat food here, I get splinters in my mouth, all right? So no, I'm not making a fucking save the environment trees video for Mr. Beast. In fact, I think I'm just going to make a video parodying the whole thing because uh, deep down in my soul, I know that will, at one, be a very funny video, but two, it'll piss off a lot of cunts. And that's what I'm all about, right? Amusing me and making you mad. That's what I love, okay? I'm not making a video about the fucking trees shit. Give him money if you want um it's a great cause i i'll put some money in there but no all right i'm not making a team trees video i don't give a fuck all right i stopped using plastic spoons that's my bit for the day when you buy a t-shirt it comes in a biodegradable bag all right i've done my fucking bit i'm not making a video pretending to do my bit yeah i've done it it's done but shout out to mr beast that shit's uh legit really really cool uh he's raised like 10 million dollars so far that's fucking insane that's really really cool you know what's not cool though? I saw an ad, yeah, for uh, Spotify, Spotify Premium, which I already have um, because it's so much better. I used to use Apple Music. I got sucked in because I just put it on my phone and I was like, I guess I use that now. I was one of those like brain dead consumers. It's easy, so I do it. You know, 
Oh, oh, I'm paying three times everybody else pays for my home insurance, but I don't want to make a phone call. Oh, so I guess I'm an idiot. You know, I was, I was one of those consumers, aka 70% of the consumers. I bet all these cunts are listening going, that could never be me. Hey, check your phone plan, cunt. I bet you're overpaying for it. No, I have to Google. I can't be bothered. I'd rather tweet Lewis about trees. Um, right, so I saw an ad. And it was like a uh, huge deal, huge, oh, my neck hurts so much, huge deal. It was like a, a giant deal that Spotify was doing. And it was like a huge benefit for signing up for Spotify Premium. It was like, if you sign up for Spotify Premium, Spotify has partnered with Google and they're giving you a free Google Home. It's like, can't. There is no fucking way I'm letting one of those spies into my house, dude. My... My first thought instantly was, why the fuck do you think it's free? Why are they putting that in your house? You know why? Because you wake up and, you, and you'll go, oh man, I would love to get some wooden spoons instead of plastic spoons. And then they start advertising that shit to you because the Google Home recorded it. There's no fucking way I'm putting one of those cunts in my house. It's like, oh, but I, I get to say, hey Google, play this instead of using my thumbs. How convenient is that? It's like, oh, yeah, I guess that's worth giving away your, your civil liberties and freedom and all of your information. No worries to some corporate soulless corporation that sells their soul and all of their employees out to China. Hey, that'd be good. That shit about China is really interesting, man. People have been asking me to do a video about China. And like, yeah, I want to. Because I think what China's doing is garbage. But also, here's the thing, right? I'm going to say this, and I want you guys to know that you can't ever say that I'm not an honest man, yeah? I might, I might not always be the best guy, but I will always try to be the most honest I can with you, right? Now, my first thought was, that's bullshit. China is denying their citizens liberty. And a bunch of American corporations like Blizzard and the NBA are bowing down to them because China has infiltrated those businesses with money. And they are trading money for freedom. And that's bullshit. And I have to say something about that. I'm going to make a video. That was my first thought. My second thought was, oh, but I really want to see Hong Kong. <laughs> that, that, that and now I won't make a video about it because I was like, oh, I could make a video, but then I'll just never see Hong Kong ever. I'll just get banned because when I go to, and I try and see Hong Kong, they'll look me up and they'll be like, oh, sorry, Lewis, you can't come because we saw the video you made about China. You can't come to Hong Kong. Fuck. And now I'm not going to do it. Sorry. Sorry, China. I can't help you. Yeah, because I want to see Hong Kong. It looks interesting. And that's the level of first world privilege that I live in and you also live in. Of, oh, I should say something about all of the injustices in the world facing people. And even though we come from a different background and they live in a different place, I should say something because it's right. But also, they've got really big towers in Hong Kong. That looks fun. All the flashing lights and shit. Cool. I want to see that. And that overrode uh, the millions and millions of people being oppressed by a Chinese government and held in internment camps. Uh, so sorry, uh, but I'm not going to do a video about it. I don't know. I might do it. I also, my, also, my other thing is like, I don't really know much about it. Um, I think I'll do it. I think I will do it. I am joking. It is bullshit. But that is genuinely what I thought of like, oh, I got to do something. Whoa, but I want to see Hong Kong. You know what I mean? Like straight up, I'll say it right now. I want to make it in America, right? So if if Donald Trump ever turns into that kind of guy and you can get banned for criticizing him, I'm keeping my fucking mouth shut, bro. <laughs> because I want to be a comedian and I, I want to make it in New York, man. I'm keeping my mouth shut. 100%. No questions asked. Yes, sir. Right? I'd stand up. I'd hail him. No worries. That's what I would do. If that was the rule, I would absolutely fall in lockstep with that, right? I hate rules, but you know what? I want to make it. 
I don't know. The China thing, the China thing's fucked. Uh, it, it is really interesting in the sense that... Here's, here's my thoughts on it, yeah? So, I know more about Blizzard than NBA because I'm a nerd, yeah? And I don't play basketball despite my height. Clearly, I can't even wake up in the morning without getting a neck injury. I don't think I can play basketball. Um, here's what I think. So, Blizzard, obviously, the Chinese market is fucking huge for Blizzard. Might even be bigger than the American market, maybe. I feel like that might be true. Um, so on one hand, right, China is making Blizzard ban people for speaking against the Chinese government, which is the law there. So Blizzard has to follow that, otherwise they're criminals or they'll get kicked out of China. So I sympathize with Blizzard because... Am I correct in thinking... I, I would love to know your thoughts on this, actually... If Blizzard does say something, and if they do stand up to China, and same with the NBA, if these businesses do stand up to China and go, no, you know what? F fuck China. Freedom for all. We believe in freedom of speech. We're American companies, and that's what we stand for. If they do do that, right, won't that put their Chinese employees who live in China in real physical danger? Isn't that what would just happen? That's what that's what I like. I, I thought of it as 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 from the point of view of if I was the boss and I had a bunch of Chinese employees, I wouldn't want to put them in danger. Because isn't China like that? The minute the minute they would do that, at the very least, right? Let's say you got a thousand employees in China. At the very minimum, they all lose their jobs, and that's like a thousand families ruined. So it is, I do sympathize with Blizzard and the NBA in the sense that, oh, it's definitely a hard decision to make. But also, I got to say, the things that I'm thinking, they definitely are not. They are absolutely doing it for money. They're not creating jobs in China so they can make sure a thousand families get fed. They're in it for money. And they're not denouncing China's government because of money. But I do think that is something to consider of if they did decide to stand up against China and go against them, wouldn't that just mean hell for every Chinese employee they have? I feel like that's true. Um, but no, I am, I am going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it in the next episode of Bi-Monthly Bull. I've got, a, um, I've got a real funny way to do it, um, I think. Um, but yeah, man, that shit's, cr that shit's crazy. I've been reading all about it. They've got like internment camps for Muslims. Uh, and they just treat them like slaves, and, and uh, a lot of them get killed. They got re-education camps. It's real 1984 shit. It's fucking scary, dude. No wonder the people in Hong Kong are freaking out, because they know that the, every if they give China an inch, they'll take a mile. Um, so it's very, very fucking strange all of that shit that's happening but also you know how everyone's like oh russia's bloody interfering in the american election you fucking know that we're interfering in the hong kong protest for sure absolutely america's got a hand in that for sure definitely man if russia's trying to fuck with america's elections we are absolutely trying to mess with hong kong's you know what i mean like, it goes both ways. It's so funny when they go, oh, they're bloody meddling in the election. It's like, yeah, so are we. So are we, man. Um, oh, dude, on a more lighthearted topic, uh, did you guys see that video of um, this woman who worked at a bar? She was like a bartender. And, uh, oh, it's so good. She uh, is working and she's in lingerie, right? Beautiful girl, insane body. She's in lingerie working as a bartender. Must be some like strip bar or whatever. And uh, she gets a glass, a pint, anti-pint, and she puts it in between her ass cheeks. She like, she spreads that shit further than Moses parted the Red Seas. Spreads her ass, puts a pint in there, no hands, holds it, and then gets up on the bar and then pours it into the cup while all these men film and go, yeah, fucking ass beer. And that's gone insanely viral. And I watched it and I was like, and it was posted by all these American accounts. And I was like, man, that's, that's fucking such an Australian thing to see an American doing. And then I looked into it. It happened in Perth. 
<laughs> because it fucking, of course it did. It happened in Perth, a titty bar in Perth. The girl doesn't even have Instagram. It wasn't supposed to go viral. It was just filmed by some dude who's probably been in the mines for three months, digging up dinosaur bones and crushing them into dust instead of sending them to a museum. And it just went accidentally viral. And now Americans are losing their shit over it. Casual Australian behavior shocks Americans yet again for the millionth time. Fucking awesome, right? So, of course, I looked this girl up on Instagram. Couldn't find her. She doesn't have one. That's just what she does for fun in Perth because what else are you going to do in Perth? That video is great because you know that's got to be the best way to just end up with a uh, fucking pink eye. For sure. That's the only thing that's going to happen. Oh, my neck hurts so much. I'm, try I'm really trying to be funny in this episode, guys, but I'm in a lot of pain. I hope you guys appreciate this shit because I'm not having fun. Oh, fuck. Ow. Oh, this sucks. Um, yeah, everybody drinking from that cup is going to have pink eye, for sure. Like, the cool party trick, yeah. Do I want to drink that beer? Nah, I don't think so. Because here's the thing. She's in Perth. So you know she's got a very sweaty ass. And she had like one of those big gym ones. So it, there was a lot of rubbing together before she spread them apart. And that's going straight into your pint. Get that up, ya. Yeah. Fucking not good, man. Not good at all. Um... All right. I think it's time to do miscellaneous bit at the end here. How long have I been going for? Oh. Guys, I'm not going to lie. It's going to have to be a short one. I'm in a lot of pain. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, that's the way it's going to be. Um, oh, I'll talk about this before I do it. Okay, so this is something else that I saw on Twitter. Did you know that... Um, so Thailand has their royal family. When I went to Thailand, the, the king and the queen were like everywhere in the shops. It's illegal to criticize them, all that really maybe you want to just run into like a random noodle shop and be like, fuck the king, and then run out, see what happens. I'll tell you what would happen. I'd get beheaded and it'd be on the news and Thailand would be like, well, them's the rules, kid. Bro, how ruthless are all of those Asian countries when it comes to tourists? They hate us. And, the, and you know, fair enough. We blew it, right? We go to their countries, we destroy them with tourism, but they, they rely on it. It's like, we're, it's like, you know what we are? We're cancer with money. They're dying from cancer, but without the money, they would die faster. So they've chosen cancer instead. Every time we go over their country, we're like, oh, it's shooey. <laughs> and we just fucking destroy their culture, have sex with all of their women. It's gross. Yeah, I actually didn't like Thailand. It just felt like we were destroying everything nice about that country. Um, so uh, Thailand's royal family, yeah, they, uh, I didn't know this. It's got posted on Twitter, I saw. Did you know that the king of Thailand has a royal mistress? Like, publicly recognized, this is my royal side bitch. The royal side pussy. That's a real thing, man. In Thailand, where they even have fucking ceremonies to bring her into the family. I watched this video of, like, the king sitting on his throne... And there's this girl in front of him on her knees, because of course she is, because she's the royal side pussy. And she's wearing like a dress that's kind of a wedding dress, but not really. It's like a wedding dress that probably has um, no crotch. <laughs> Ow. Um, and so he's like anointing her, and it's like an official ceremony. It's all in the news and that. And sitting next to the king is his wife. Just watching the royal side pussy get welcomed into the family as the royal mistress. Actually, this is real. Isn't that fucking awesome? That's so funny. And I found out about this because it was big news because the royal mistress cheated on the king. Can't have that. She got booted out and it was a big scandal. The king's like, how dare you be unfaithful to me? And then the, w the wife is like, yeah, I wonder how that feels. That's awesome. Thailand's royal family have it sorted, bro. The royal side pussy. I wonder if she has any powers. Like, here's... the here, Okay, this must be how it works, yeah? So you know how the Queen of England, she, uh, she can uh, come into Parliament and suspend Parliament. She can kind of veto stuff. She can walk in. She's got some power still, right? 
How about this? The royal side piece of Thailand, she can go into parliament and she can make changes and she can veto stuff only if she sucks the dick of one politician. So she really better believe in something, yeah? So if they if they're if they're about to like um make gay marriage illegal there or or keep it illegal. I don't know what it is there. And she comes in and she's like, I think that gays should be allowed to get married. She has to suck the dick of everyone who disagrees with her. And that's the only way she can get it done. She'd be a hero. The very not Virgin Mary. Um, okay, let's get into miscellaneous bit at the end here, shall we? If you would like to send an email into the podcast, shoot it through to podcast at lewspears.com. That's podcast at lewspears.com. If you have a question for me, if you need some life advice, or if you have just an entertaining story um, that you would uh, like to tell me and all of the listeners to hear. Here we go. This one's from David. G'day, cunt. I went to my first ever funeral recently. Oh, starting a bit light. Went to my first ever funeral recently and it had me reflecting on life and shit and it gave me a newfound respect for comedy having an effect in alleviating situations. So comedy in sad situations. My question, for my question, I was wondering if you ever did material on something you never actually personally experienced but eventually experienced later and formed a new perspective on that material. You never personally experienced but experienced later. I don't really know what that means. How have I never experienced it, but if I experienced it later? What I think he's trying to say is, have you ever written a joke about something that happened ages ago after you got a new perspective, I think? And yes, that happens all the time. Often, this happens less often because I'm a lot better at stand-up, but this used to happen a few years ago. In my first three years, I would would write down stories or perspectives or ideas for bits and uh, I knew there was funny in them, but I just couldn't find it because I didn't have the skills. And then I ended up coming back as a more seasoned comedian to those old bits that I wrote and reviving them. A really good example of this is my um, ping pong story from Try and Stop Me. I wrote that when I went to Thailand after my second show, my second, my first show rather, and I tried to write it as a joke of what it was like seeing a ping pong show And like my idea of it versus the reality of it, which was very sad. I thought it would be fun. It was very sad. It was sex trafficking. And I tried to make this funny, but it was just sad because I wasn't good enough as a comedian. And then I ended up coming back in my third year or maybe even my fourth year. And I rewrote the whole bit as a better comedian. And it ended up being one of the highlights of my show. Um, So yeah, that does happen. Um, Here we go. This one has an interesting headline. I like this one. I fucked a 30-year-old in a different state and then had a second date with my girlfriend. Oh, no. What's up, cunt? Cool. My name is Mike. I fucking love death threats. Don't scare me. And I can't wait to see your show in Perth in a few weeks. Legend, bro. I'm looking forward to see you there. Hope your girlfriend's not coming. My story is pretty shit, so I'll keep it short. And then he proceeds to write seven paragraphs. Good on you, bro. Uh, Something like five months ago, I was 18 and still a virgin out of high school, trying to figure out my life and myself after a nasty split up of my friend group. Oh, that always happens at 18. I headed to Melbourne with my mum because she had a conference to go to and she offered me a spot on the plane since I have a friend who moved there after high school. Sadly, couldn't see one of your shows because it was short notice and my friend cancelled on me night before. So instead, I went to a retro club with my mum and some of her old friends and you were like, I'm getting some old pussy. While I was killing it on the dance floor to some backstreet boys, this hot Israeli girl comes over to me. She must have loved my conversation because we ended up pretty drunk at her house where she turned out to be 30, even though she didn't look it. Dude, how did you... So you just abandoned your mum. You went out clubbing with your mum, and then you were like, sorry, mum, i got to go and slay this uh, this pussy that's comparatively close to your age. And she was like, enjoy yourself, sonny. I suppose that's better than taking your mum home, huh? <laughs> um, uh, she turned out to be 30, didn't look it, and after some sex, which was about as shit as you would imagine, I ended up learning a thing or two. Uh, well, I guess if that was the first time you ever had sex, yeah, that would have been. She, would, Bro, she would have been so disappointed. 30-year-old woman takes home an 18-year-old guy who's never fucked before. She would have been so disappointed. That's amazing. Now, two weekends before this, I went out with a good friend uh, called Topaz, who'd turn 18 and her friend I'd never met. We ended up hitting it off and bonding over trying to stop Topaz 
Um, blah, blah, blah. Oh, the week after, we had a coffee date that went really well, and we went on a second date when I got back from Melbourne. This is Topaz's friend. Why would you name Topaz if she leaves the story, dude? We've been dating since then, and this girl is super chill in everything except our, in everything except our relationship where she's so smitten by me, it's a tad embarrassing. We've had a great time and even greater sex, part of which I attribute to me having a tiny bit of experience before we got started. There you go. I should mention she was a virgin as well. I haven't told her about what happened in Melbourne, and I don't know if I should. It's been eating me recently, so I wanted your input. Help me, cunt. I don't like the idea of lying, but I also don't mind taking the secret to my grave. It feels like a good bit came out of it. It feels like a bit of good came out of it, and my girlfriend and I were hardly in a relationship at the time. But I don't know if she'll see it that way and focus on idiot drunk me just wanting to get some pussy in the moment. Should I tell her? And if so, how should I do it? I would love to hear from you, even though I'd rather put bleach in my eyes than listen to Miss Laney's bit at the end. Have a shit one, Mike Hunt. <laughs> Good on you, Mike Hunt. Yeah, that's a hard one, bro. Here's what I think. You said you weren't dating, so you know what? You weren't dating. She doesn't need to know. You went on one date with this girl. She was not your girlfriend. It was never made official. You were a single man. Leave it in the past. She doesn't need to know. Because here's the thing, man. What is anyone actually going to gain out of this? You telling her, yeah? All that's going to happen is you're going to go, ah, now I don't have to keep it a secret, even though it's not really a secret because we weren't dating at the time. And she will feel betrayed, especially because you're her first guy she's ever been with. I feel like that's a bad move. I feel like you should just... It is what it is, man. You were single at the time and you acted like a single man. She doesn't need to know. That's my advice. I don't think anything good will come out of that. Especially, like normally I'd be like, be honest because it's, you know, you're in a relationship and you cheated on it. But I don't think you did. It doesn't sound like you did. It sounds like you weren't in a relationship. You were dating this girl. Fairly normal for people to date around. Especially because you're 18 you're living an 18-year-old life, man. Just, uh, yeah, you're sweet. I wouldn't say anything, all right? I'm going to wrap it up there because my neck hurts fucking heaps, all right? Thank you so much for listening, guys. Hopefully, next episode, I'll be in better shape and uh, a bit of a better mood. And, um, yeah, man, uh, see me on tour. No Slide Season is on sale. We've got only four shows left. So Hobart, Adelaide, Perth, and Bunbury. I would love to see you there. Give us a call. Give us a call. I just read that off a fucking sticker. I'm an idiot. All right. See you later, guys. Uh, LouisSpears.com slash gigs. Support me on Patreon if you want early access to everything that I do. And I would love to revamp the podcast with your help. And Patreon's the way we're going to do that. So, I'll see you soon. Hopefully, I won't be in a wheelchair. Cunt. Ow.